Hello everybody, Andrea here with Soda Fit. I appreciate you for dropping to my channel. If you're new here, I am Andrea with Soda Fit and I teach you how to fit patterns for your body, your taste, and your style. Today I'm going to be giving you a room tour that has been requested by poll. You guys voted on what you wanted to see and finally <laughs> I am going to show you some of it. I think that as time goes on, ooh, I can't hear myself, sorry. I think that as time goes on, I'm going to create this as a series because I only gave you portions because it's, there's so much in here. So I think that as time goes on, I'll show you how I organize certain portions and or areas of my sewing room. I've already started the, situ the organizing of my fabric and my patterns. I did a YouTube video live stream one night with the patrons and YouTube as a whole on organizing my patterns. So that will be in another video because I don't want to make this video too long. So what I'm doing is giving you a little bit of a tour around the sewing room this space is a 18 by see 15 by 17 foot room it used to be a loft and i closed in the walls in this room so basically this is an attic now and so i had to have um the ac people come out and put in an ac unit splitter so that i could get ac up here into this room so if you see these uh, AC vents, then that's the extra AC I had put in here, which is why I can't cover certain areas up. You'll see that too. And um, I actually put my sewing room into sections and areas that I work in, meaning that each area is a station. So I have like a station you'll see that I work on like office stuff, that would be, and then it's storage as well, but more current storage that I need, including patterns that I want to sew currently, whereas patterns in these drawers over here are patterns that may come up down the road that I might want to work with as time goes on. Then I have my patterns on the wall. Those are patterns that I put on the uh, hooks that I may have for a person that I'm sewing for or somebody who's cons who needs me to fit their pattern for them. Then of course, I have uh, patterns that I've drafted and of course, that is always gonna be someplace where you need to hang those. Patterns I've downloaded and stuff like that. Also, like I said, as far as the sections or the areas, workstations, I have my cutting station, pattern making station. I would like to have another cutting table, but <laughs> I don't want to lose all this floor space. Speaking of floor space, I try to keep as much as I can off the floor, which is why I have a lot of container store uh, wall. They came and did a review or I took my uh, pictures of my sewing room to them when I was in a smaller room. I was in a four, uh, a 10 by or 11 by 12 foot room. So it can be done. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I don't want to fill this room up so much because I want to keep it as compact as I used to have it when I was in the smaller room so that I won't overdo it because it can just grow over you real quick. Um, so the cutting and pattern making station is one table, meaning I need to keep that clean and ready to rock and roll. Then I have my pressing and sewing station. Okay. works. Also, I have to use my sewing room as my studio. So it's my recording studio, it's my live streaming studio. And the reason I use the word studio is because it's kind of like a new studio. It literally is my live streaming studio. So I have to keep it to a minimum. I have to have everything as much as possible off the floor. If I had a different ceiling, I would be able to hang more things from the ceiling. I don't have that option because I have a cathedral ceiling. The only thing between me, this ceiling, and the roof above it is probably what, however wide the joist is that hold this house together. 
which me I that's why I'm not connecting anything to these the beam joints. that's up there for the, the circulating the air the fan which I barely can turn on anyway because every time I'm filming the sound is so horrible you got to be very careful with that now uh, this area that I'm in not only becomes the sewing um, the, like this table which I've taken a picture for you but this table not only this is here it also becomes a student desk so I can unfold a regular eight foot or six foot folding table and use that because two people can sit at it one across the other but because of the pandemic I've only been able to teach maybe somebody that's family or close friend, which that only has happened a couple of times because I was so uncomfortable. Uh, so that's not happening right now. This table can roll like I showed you. It can roll. And because it can roll, I put it to the side. I take everything off. I put pattern books on top of it, which I have several pattern books because some people need to, they need to see. I may sketch or stand at the cutting table. I sketch their ideas. Since the pandemic, I have been doing a lot more FaceTime. FaceTime to, for them to tell me what they want, for me to sketch what they want, and we discuss it. And usually those are people I know very well. And they still have to wear a mask. So that is very, trust me, that is very minimal. Now, the other thing is this area here that I'm in is also a, a photography area, a photo shoot area, and it's an area for uh, people to fit and change and be able to let me pin their garments together. So when I finish with this, this is like the perfect setup for me. It's a staging area. It's a filming area. It's a, a fitting area. <laughs> it's an everything area. When I have major, major, major projects, I can sit side by side two regular six foot folding tables together, put some risers on them. And once I put those risers on them, then I can put my cutting board, the little matte cutting board on top and I'm ready to go. I can literally have two big tables and, and be working. So one area can be a pattern table and one area can be fabric cutting. Either way, it works out great for me. <laughs> I like that. Now, I still have a few things as you have seen through the video. You will see through the video. There's still some things I can do better. I like it a lot. So after I finish all of this, when you guys look at it, if you like what you see or you have other suggestions for things that you would be interested in seeing how I organize, let me know in the comment section so that I can see what you might be interested in and then I can do other videos to tell you how I organize other portions or things in my sewing room. Okay, so we're going to come into my sewing room. This is my door, okay? And when we come into my door, you can see as you come in, this is where you walk in. So starting on the left side here is where I store and have all of my printing and all of the packing material. And then that's lining. I don't know how I ended up doing this. I tried to have everything in my sewing room to where it could be rolling. These are my shades that I hang up at the top here for my backdrops whenever I want to do that. This is my closet for additional storage. And then of course, this is one of my girls here. And I have a professional dress form. This is a fabulous fit dress form. And so that area has to be open. A lot of these areas have to be open because of my AC unit. Now that's my Wi-Fi, and that's my uh, eight terabyte hard drive to save all of my good information called the cloud. Now the next part of this is, this is my moving table. This is like my moving live streaming table. So everything has to roll. Here's where I store my patterns and currently I am re-sorting re my patterns and getting those better organized. So you'll be hearing more about that as I move through. Some of you guys already helped me on my Saturday Night Live. 
So now we go here and I have 20 years of Berta magazines and I don't want to get rid of them. All this up here, these are missing pieces or patterns that have some things missing. And look, these are extra chairs. If you look at this table here, you can see where I could have two people take lessons. So let's move that. Those are chairs over there. I'm not going to waste time cleaning these tables because then I'd be putting things where they don't belong. So in that case, I'll go ahead and tell you what's on the table. This is all the stuff I need to put my laptop. So I would put my laptop up on here. This is to clean my glasses because I need my glasses to see. My tape, extra plugs and stuff like this. This is my studio bag. This is everything I need to throw in my backpack that has to do with filming, editing, and so on. This is my main camera that I use. So it's a Nikon 5300. And I've been using this for quite some time. I'm lucky that I haven't dropped it or anything because the other uh, camera that I used to have, I've dropped it. <laughs> so now I don't like that. But this is pretty much how my table looks, all right? And this is when I get ready to film. I have sit here on this stool. I put these lights up. And because I still have people working to put lights up on the ceiling. Now, over here, if you see right there, that's more patterns that have been utilized to help people fit or to do alterations for to teach. OK, that's a big deal for me. Then, of course, I have just thread sitting around. You know, everybody I like kind of having thread that looks pretty like that. I'm still organizing my patterns, but basically these are and I'll put the link or the information up here so you'll you'll know what these draw systems are. But I'll open it up so you can see. All right, so currently I have separated them out into the company. Now I'm going to separate them into, put them in order by number and scan them into my system to have them there. Let's go over this part right here real quick. Okay, ironing supplies, parts for the iron, anything that has to do with the iron even though it's not in the same place as the iron is. It's no big deal because I never usually have to use something in here unless I'm so uh, pressing something special like velvet and things like that. Velvet boards and stuff, okay? This area here is fabric, fabric, fabric. These down here, Berta magazines, uh, my Bible and stuff like that, which probably shouldn't be at the bottom. But then here I have more fitting books, fabric, fabric, more books i love books and over here more books and of course you see this lamp that's i can't do anything about that's how it's going to be for now now over here i have this rolling cart which like i said i am a rolling person everything has to roll and this is the container store these are ikea these are target contain i mean ikea ikea container store Ikea and this here is all fabric okay this is my nice fabric wools and everything are in the cedar basket boucle and things like that now I have my leather stored in an entirely different place so you're not going to see my leather in this room all right I try to keep everything clean up here because I've decided not to use the backdrop up here anymore because it's too much extra work and when I put it up there, it actually blocks my airflow. And the AC man <laughs> said, do not let that happen. So I have to be careful. I have a lot of trinkets that I've gotten as gifts from my kids. I've gotten from, oh, and I love this one here. I got this one from my daughter, or my granddaughter. Angels from above, watch over those we love. Now, this is kind of interesting because I got this one from a friend of mine when I first met her and this was one of my first angels that got put in my sewing room then I have my Bernina because I when I bought my Bernina sewing machine I bought it when they had the 75th anniversary and it is a music box oh I love that okay now when I went to Chicago and went to the Okator uh, 
fashion show, I won this one, and that was really nice. It was part of the Chicago Old Couture Club or something. I made this sign at my granddaughter's sewing, I mean, at my granddaughter's birthday party here in Houston. You, They cut the outside. I sent them my my logo design. They created all of the stuff I wanted as far as a stencil. And then when I went in, I just kind of drew stuff on, but they created this stencil for me so that I can paint this board. And I showed them my business card so they helped me organize and get the right color of uh, whatever I needed to get the color for my room. Another gift from my daughter. And I love irises. And then another sewing machine which is another gift from one of my kids. It hold, It's supposed to hold like rings and stuff, so you can have it someplace else with that, okay. I probably sometimes put this in because it kind of bothers me when I'm doing pattern designing. This I won, this is like the Oscars of fashion design school. So this I won because I had the best uh, design in the fashion show during 2009 at HCC, Houston Community College, where I went. Now, my daughter bought this but <laughs> because I still love it, but it's backwards. So you can see, you can't really sew that way unless you have a left-handed sewing machine. <laughs> I think left-handed people would really love that. And I couldn't take it off and turn it around, so it's good. Of course, we always need tissue. I'll show you how I organize my fabric later, but let's keep going. This is the current project that I'll show you more of later. We did a live stream on that one. Now let's uh, talk about the two areas. We've got my pressing station and sewing station is together. I know a lot of people like using all of these things to roll and put their pressing on, but I just like a regular old ironing board. So here we are. This is like at first when I first built my desk. Now I meant to tell you guys, I built this whole desk system and my whole table over here, okay? So we'll get back over there in a moment. This is my Bernina sewing machine. This is my serger. It's a Bernina serger, and I'll tell you more about those later when I do a sewing machine reveal or whatever. And under here is my other cover stitch sewing machine. Everyone loves my chair. <laughs> I love my chair. <laughs> That's the bum diggity right there. So I love my chair. This stool under here is for people to stand on if they're short when they come to do fittings, if I do any sewing for folks, which is not often anymore. Now I have a little arm up there that holds a camera that I can do an overhead shot for my sewing if I choose to. Sometimes I don't feel like doing that, but it's there and it's mounted when I need it. I'll come over here and you can kind of see there's another camera mounted over my Juki so when I sew, and film over here, I have that camera. Now, if you see these big, long uh, cables, but those are continuous feed cords right there that help the computer to receive the data so that it won't be broken down and the data will always be high definition. And that's what we need when we're filming. Now, of course, you know, I'll tell you more about my organization later, but this is, my love right here. I mean, you probably have seen this. I just love that. It's it's like the perfect thing for me because you have that that background here. And so when I want to have this background, then I have it and you can see me talking to you guys, talking head right here. Or I might be over here and you see me talking head over here. It's nice clean. Or I might sit right here with this behind me. So I could do a lot of stuff with this. And I like it like that because the way I used to have it set up was way too constricting. However, let's continue to go. I don't wanna keep messing and changing. So I have my stretch knits over here. These are all stretch fabrics, any kind of knit and everything. This is my pressing station, all the stuff I need to press. Um, up here is storage. These right here is, that right there is zippers. 
And you could pretty much, if you came into my sewing room, you would be very, you would find it very easy to find what you're looking for in my sewing room. I bought the pink uh, labeler, but for some reason, it's not pink enough for me. I like pink. <laughs> so I need to put more pink. I literally like to see pink, 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 pink. This here is not pink enough. So just so you know, that is the kind of pink I like, those sizes. So you can see right here, I have like rubber bands, which usually end up on my wrist, thumbtacks, my jukey feet over here. Some things are out of place, machine oils. Some things are out of place, of course, because my sewing machine used to be right under here. I might move it back. Okay, let's keep going. These are woolly nylon threads and more thread racks. Here's a little area you can see down between here. I actually cleaned it up <laughs> so you guys can see this stuff. And let me go ahead and fold up this ironing board now. All right, now I've folded up the ironing board so you can really see more of what I have going on. This is my extra sewing machine that I take with me sometimes or to classes and then I have more fabric and more these are my projects I'm working on here okay so now let's go back over here moving along I put my patterns up there that I'm working on or preparing I'm working for somebody or my own patterns they just on my pattern hooks and stuff like that now this black thing right here is my portfolio now this usually goes under here it goes like right in there see there but i think i have something on the other side so i'm not going to move that so let's let me just move that out of the way and let me show you over here so i moved that over this is another overhead right thing so i move that out the way all right now on this side is my portfolio then here is my contact paper that I put my slopers on. So I did my sloper block using my own pattern block, which is in my shop. This is the soda fit block system that you can use to actually plot and create your own block, which is this is what I've used to fit or to design stuff for myself. All right, we come over here and I consider this like a little bit of kind of like a workstation. I mean, that makes sense, right? <laughs> you see it behind me every time I do a video, so I'm not gonna go too far into that. I don't, I didn't label these because I don't want anybody knowing what's in each one of these boxes. So you guys know that they're organizing. Machine manuals, my samples for classes that I teach, sewing class lesson plans, and this up here is for my patrons. Those are like handouts and stuff I give for downloads whenever I do it. Storage that I don't use barely. This is just pretty. <laughs> I don't have anything in there yet. These are pretty right here. These, I don't have anything in there yet. No, I do. I think I do. I'm not real sure. I'll show you what's in there later. Okay, so here are client files. So that's why I hide those because I don't want you to see the names. But this is interesting. These are all of the projects that I do for you guys on any of my videos. So that way I'll know if I filmed it or did anything for it, it's in one of these files here. That way, if I even made it for myself or my daughter, then I put it up here, okay? That, that makes it easier for me. This is the Ludlow system. I like that system. Maybe one day I'll show you. Now, I do have a lot of these everywhere. I love those. Everybody who goes out of town always bring me one, bring some back. And I have a lot of them everywhere around the room and in my other parts of my house. This was the first Timex watch piece. I like this. I really do. It used to tick. <laughs> I don't know how to change the battery out. But, oh well, it's beautiful though. Take a picture to last longer. All right. 
Yeah. Okay, let's move over here. Books, tailoring materials up here, specialty fabric for sewing and creating bustiers and wedding outfits, gowns and stuff. More cute gift items I've gotten from somebody. Storage box up there. I like those cute storage boxes. So if you want to send me a gift, you can send me a gift. Now, tailoring supplies, I've been having to use a lot of those lately and linings. I already told you I have linings right there. Okay, I got tired of reaching up there. So these are linings that I use for menswear, tailoring, and stuff like that, that I don't care if it's rayon and people who don't know any better. <laughs> I hope nobody heard this, but that's what I do because rayon lining costs a lot. So a lot of times I'll use acetate lining or anything that's regular, regular lining. This right here is my planner community type of stuff. I love that kind of stuff. So if you want to send me some cute markers and stickers for my planner, please do. Because you'll see me doing a lot of that if you don't see me. All of my fitting books, all of my educational material. And I could do a book review if you guys want later on. This is for student work that I have for teaching. So that's why it has all sold up because all of this stuff is like lesson plans and things like that, that I take to a class. Speaking of what I take to a class with me would be this bag. And then these down here, you can see stuff under there in boxes. I might pull one box and it'll go to a class with me because it's a different class for each one. Like I have a class for teaching fit, a class for teaching the dress form and a class for teaching pants. So I grab whichever, class I'm teaching, I'll grab a box and take it with me. It's already prepared. It already has the lesson plan in it and it already has any patterns that I'll be discussing. When I do the pattern making to where I'm teaching anything that has to do with sew to fit, then I'll also take the sew to fit pattern or the sew to fit bodice block. Okay. These are all fabrics that flirt, so I really do try to keep those separate, except for this one here. This one doesn't go in there. I don't know why. But anyway, I'll leave it there so I won't get confused. Okay? Oh, man, I need to make that stuff up. <laughs> all right. Now, coming back, coming around over here. So eat, sleep, repeat. That is a metal. Uh, I was going to put it on my door, but I use both sides of my door. Because the front side of my door is a mirror, I keep my, my door open. I couldn't put that on the door, so I had to put it up here. So this piece, this box right here is for lost pattern pieces to go with the other patterns that need pieces. So I could try to match them up to these pieces that are lost. And then it's the other side of the table. When you guys, now you're on this side of the table. When you guys see me filming, this is what I'm live streaming with what's in front of me. I am live streaming with this here. That's my overhead camera. That's my face camera. And this is my monitor to monitor everything that you guys see while I'm online doing a live stream. Most of the time I'll use the system. I have a special system that I use. It's called Ecamm Live. So I'll put the link in the description if you're interested in it. But sometimes I use this to even film my overhead table shots when I'm actually doing any kind of alteration or pattern work or cutting. Because I don't really like this vantage point right here to, to cut for you guys to see. Because I don't like all of that stuff in the background. Even when I do it like this, I mean, I, I just have too much going on. So I like having it overhead. So this is an overhead arm that I use and it is not on the floor like these lights. So I have another connector that I just got so that I can connect this light onto there. But what I do when I need to go to this side of the room, I just turn the lights this way and I turn this box light. Also, I turn it that way. That way my filming, if I need to film over here, if I'm at night, if it's at night, I'll move this lamp to here to get the lighting I need over me so that you can see much better when I am sewing right here, okay? And that works out real good because this odd light, it works really well. Then of course, 
camera charging batteries and stuff like that that right there is what you see right here this is what you see when i'm filming okay this is what is in the background for me to do all that filming okay so i have the camera these special cords which is in the description and i have all this stuff listed in my amazon shop if you guys have questions or what i use i'd be happy to answer your question this here is my tripod i think it's the best tripod in the world because of its swivel and this is i have like three of these things see it just swivels turns does whatever i need it to do it's just perfect so see there we go it's a manfrotto right and i don't use it a lot uh because i don't need it <laughs> but if i do so down here is where i store my whiteboard my extra cutting mats my this one here is for students i put it on the table for them i have my green boards under there which the green boards are or cutting mats are for when you use your rotary cutter which i don't use very often because i cut with my rotary on here which is probably not a good idea but hey you know what it's just too much to switch and change so basically i have these and now like i said everything has to roll okay this is current projects so you can see i have these hanging there and more more of this here stuff going on under here now this it goes all the way through to the other side and i'll show you what's over there on the other side but this here is the back of the filming station this is where i sit when i film my front videos my talking head videos to tell you where i am i think i got everything there these are alterations of myself that i took out of my closet and i'm not sure if i want to redo them or not <laughs> okay let's go back over here real quick i'm going to show you what's under here when i'm sitting down okay when i'm sitting down i usually put my foot here and i'll move these over because i'm sitting on that stool that black stool that you saw these are all of my papers my tracing papers my i even have some vellum in here some drawing paper some pattern paper and i have a few rolled up uh soda fit patterns up in there so that i can do tutorials if i need to this is my another rolling cart i told you guys i am all about what can be moved so that's why this this uh cutting table that i built it rolls but i'm having to change some things up because i moved some things from other places in my house and anyway moving on <laughs> Okay, so this here is not as well organized as it usually is, but this is where I reach when I'm doing any kind of pattern making and stuff like that. Okay, and this here is where I get my hooks when I finish doing a pattern so it'll be ready. And I don't know what's in there. I think that's a bunch of muslins of garments I did for people. I keep the muslin. I do not give people their muslin because that's like my insurance when they say it didn't fit. Okay, over here, all of this is i is everything you see on the wall is container store and anything that rolls is container store with the exception of this table i got this at ikea this is all of like learning and stuff but these drawers interfacing projects that i've completed in these two drawers and down here projects that i may start for somebody else these are my big rulers and flat items that I can need to grab all the time. This one here are patterns I'm considering. And here's one of my patterns here. This needs to be someplace else because I'm going to make this again. You guys probably saw that last video on this one, okay? Because you better go check it out. All right, this one is samples and patterns. This is my pattern for the soda fit okay so if you take a class with me you would get one of these as part of your class and this is what you would use because it goes up to a size 24 and i'll teach you how to grade it and everything but that's what you would use for the class i think that's it oh <laughs> more stuff way up there okay i have stuff everywhere it is well <laughs> well put together for me i feel like this is like really a nice sewing room
this is how it is this is my sewing room i am happy with it there are a few things i would like to change but i can't right now because i still need to make my table a rolling table these are more books so this here let me just i'm sorry i changed up real quick i don't like this here okay so what i want to do is have a hanging uh item or something like goes down like they do on the football field where you have this <laughs> going i don't know i just i just want to do that yay i like this this is really nice really nice that's it that's my sewing room really nice oh let me go put this back where it belongs there we go put that back where it belongs you guys have any questions let me know i'll be happy to answer your questions like i said everything i have is in the description and on my amazon shop if you want to go check it out because all of this stuff about electronics filming equipment all of this about from um, Amazon, except this here about at Best Buy. A couple other things about at Best Buy, but I think it's not worth talking about that. So let's go ahead and finish. That's it. Let me know in the comment section so that I can see what you might be interested in. And then I can do other videos to tell you how I organize other portions or things in my sewing room. Or even if you want to know what type of books I have on all these shelves. I'll be happy to do those kind of videos for you. So let me know. And then uh, as far as that goes, welcome to my studio. That is why when I say welcome to my studio in the beginning of my videos, I truly say welcome to my studio because you are coming in here with me. And that is, that means more to me than saying welcome to my channel because coming to my channel is more you coming to see me you coming to see what i'm doing in my studio and i appreciate you for doing by the way the top i am wearing is vogue number 9029 i did a video on how to make adjustments how to fit it and also how to do the though actually i did the whole video on how to do the pattern adjustments and everything i'll put those links in the card and in the description for you guys if you want to learn how to fit this top so let me show you how it looks okay this is just a regular princess seam top it's a button down i made it out of a cotton and i don't know how long i had my wristband open like that but i don't care <laughs> that's it you guys get that much okay so yeah this here is a princess seam top from the shoulder okay that goes over the bust and under the bust and i love this top it's made out of a poplin uh cotton poplin from so much fabric i've been had this top since 2015 2016 and it, i keep it white i just wash it at home and i do everything myself because i don't like dry cleaner stuff i will see you guys on the other side of the internet you guys take care and see you in the next video or see you at the next time i do a video in my studio <laughs> bye